Hi everyone, my name is Tom Millichamp from Edgewords and we're going to do a couple of video blogs on integrating Ranarex with Git and Jenkins as part of a continuous integration process. This is going to be in two parts. The first part we are going to look at integrating Ranarex with Git and also with GitHub. And then the second video we'll do, we'll look at bringing in Jenkins and uh, demonstrating the entire continuous integration process with Ranarex, GitHub and Jenkins. So I'm going to be using Ranarex, Git and Tortoise Git on my local machine. And that's all I'm going to be using in the first video. In the second video, I will be introducing using Jenkins and Jenkins will be running in a Docker container. OK, so the first video we are going to look at just the simple Ranarex Git source control integration. So there are pre some prerequisites to this. Um, I've got Ranarex installed. And for Git integration, you need to install Git. I'll put the URLs in the uh, uh, description in the YouTube video. As well as Git, you need to install Tortoise Git. And this provides Ranarex with the icons that are integrated into the Ranarex IDE and some of the visual uh, Git tools that we will be using. As well as using Git locally, I'm going to demonstrate how you can uh, push up to a, Git, a GitHub repository as well. So you just need to, if you haven't already, create yourself a GitHub account. OK. So once we've installed Git and taught us Git, we can invoke Ranarex, create a new project, and we can choose to add that project to source control and then select the source control provider, in this case, Git. So this is when you're creating a new project. If you've got an existing project, you can also add that in. So if we open up a project within Ranarex, and then if you simply right click on the solution file within the Project Explorer, Right click, source control, add to source control, and then select Git. So you can do this for new project projects or existing projects. OK, so let's actually see this in action. I've got Git installed. And if I wanted to double check that, I can open up uh, the Windows command or a PowerShell. Git dash dash version. And we can see we've got that installed. If I go into Windows Explorer and choose a folder, if I right click, then in here you can see we've got Tortoise Git. We can create a repository here and we've got the clone option as well. So I can see that I've got Git installed, Tortoise Git. They all seem to be integrated into the Windows shell and working correctly. So let's open up Ranarex and let's create a new test solution and give this a name. And choose to add it to source control. Click Create. OK, and we choose Git as the source control provider and our project is opened. If we look over in the Project Explorer, you can see that the icons are slightly different. We've got these blue pluses, which indicate that these files have now been added to Git staging. And if I choose any of these files and just open up the containing folder in Explorer, OK, and we go to the actual Runnerx project folder that I've created, then we can see we've got the uh, .git folder there. So Runnerx has created this or marked this as a Git repository. OK, so let's do a first commit. And we do this just by selecting the solution, right click, and we can do a commit. We can provide our message, so let's call this first commit. 
Down at the bottom, we can choose which files we want to add to source control. So in this case, I'm going to add the solution files as well. I'm going to add the entire project and then click commit. So we can see a success. And if we click close, we can see the icons now change to green ticks to show that we are in sync with the master. This is the, uh, the current version, the latest version of the files that we are using. OK, so at the moment we are just using a local repository. The actual project folder itself for this RunnerX Studio project is our Git repository and it's just local on this machine. So let's look at how we could then push this up to GitHub if we were sharing this project and other people were able to edit this as well. So if you go into GitHub and we log in, so I've already logged into my account here and we click add a new repository and we give this a name. and click Create Repository. OK, so we've now created an empty repository within the GitHub account. And at the top here, we can see the URL for this. So what I want to do is actually just grab hold of that and copy that to the clipboard. And then we'll go back into RunnerX. So what I'm going to do now is just take this solution, this RunnerX project, right click again, go under git source control, and this time I'm going to do a push, and I'm going to push it up to that GitHub repository. So in here, we can just put the URL in here, or if you want, you can click manage and you can create remotes in here. So, you know, I can give this a name and then it's uh, reusable. But let's just keep this very quick and easy for now. Let's just paste that URL that we pasted, uh, copied a few minutes ago from the GitHub account as the URL and click OK. So that's been successful. If I close that and we go back into my web browser, back to GitHub and we do a refresh in here. There we go, we can see the RunnerX project and all the files. And we can see that there has been one commit. At the moment, just one branch, just the master. OK, what about changes then? So let's just hit record in the project. And we will do some desktop recording. Let's just open an application and close it again. Stop recording at that point. OK, so we've made some changes. Now, we haven't saved these files, so Git's not actually recognizing that we've made any modifications yet. So let's just save those files, give it a second to refresh, and then we can see in the Project Explorer, we've got these red exclamation marks indicating that some of these files have now changed. Recording one, which is what we've just edited, and the object repository. If we wanted to see the differences that have been created between this and the, the master, then we can right click and we can use diff. And we can see the changes between the working tree and the master. OK, so once we've made the changes, we can simply commit these changes locally. And if we want, we could also push this up to our GitHub repository all in one go. So if I again right click on the solution and we go to commit. And we put in a message. It 
sure we've got all the files that we require. And down at the bottom where we've got the commit button, if you just click on the drop down, you can see we actually have commit and push. So we can do both of these tasks at the same time. So we've just done our commit. And now we can push it. Choose the URL for the GitHub project or repository rather. Click close. OK, you can see we are now back in sync. And if we go into GitHub, into our repository, here are our files and we can see we've got the two commits there. OK, so the integration with Ranarex and Git is pretty straightforward to set up. It's integrated into the Ranarex IDE. So we've got all of the tools and the context sensitive menus directly available within Ranarex Studio. So that's all I'm going to show you in this video. And then in the next video, we are going to introduce using Jenkins and we're going to see how we can get Jenkins to pull repositories from GitHub to build a Ranarex project to execute it and also to publish the results. So if you just uh, click the link for the second video, we will see you again then. Thank you very much.